Welcome to Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. In the next half hour, you'll obtain insights and tools to transform your life using the biblical principles found in the 12-step program. We believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience because we all have struggles in life. Struggles with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, and relationships to name a few. You'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through life recovery. Your host is Steve Arterburn, founder of New Life Ministries and Women of Faith, author of over 100 books, and teaching pastor at Northview Church in Carmel, Indiana, one of the 20 largest churches in America. Steve is the co-editor of the Life Recovery Bible, the number one selling recovery Bible. With over 3 million copies sold, this is the Bible given to inmates by Prison Fellowship and the Pew Bible for the Salvation Army. Now here's Steve. Hi there, Steve Arterburn here, and welcome to Life Recovery Today. You know, everything we do is based on the Life Recovery Bible that is so popular with so many people, and uh, it has workbooks and other things that, that might help you with whatever you're struggling with. Now, uh, we all have anxiety. We all face some fear. But it's amazing how folks uh, don't expect to have that when they get off of whatever they've been on. When we stop depending on the addiction uh, that, we, that has us dependent, uh, no wonder uh, we have so much anxiety and fear uh, as we struggle. Because, um, well, first of all, rather than being stuffed into the addiction and the impact that it has, whatever mood alteration that it does, we're out there facing the reality with no chemical adjustment whatsoever. We're on our own. And we haven't been doing that because of the addiction. So naturally, fear, anxiety, and discomfort is going to come up. That's why it doesn't matter if you're delivered or you delivered somebody else or whatever. We've got work to do, and it's going to cause us to be anxious. Well, if you're living with somebody, and they're overcoming, and they're having some victory in the area of addiction, well, of course, um, that's going to impact our lives. And we need to understand how in the world could we help them without hurting us. Because it's hard to see somebody struggling with addiction, then they quit, and now they're struggling with all this anxiety and fear and other stuff. And sometimes, of course, it's natural to think, man, I, I wish they'd just go back and, and drink or eat or whatever, take pills again, because at least I knew what I was dealing with there. This is new territory. Well, to help you out, uh, Becky Brown, who, I mean, Becky has been everything that you could possibly be or do at New Life. Uh, she's a therapist. She's an author. She's co-host of the New Life Live program. And uh, she, she really is one of the wisest people I know. And uh, in this edition of Life Recovery Today, Becky is going to talk about uh, the concept of living and loving a person who has anxiety. And I think it's going to help all of us to understand how better to help a person who is in recovery, but boy, is the anxiety ever overloading them. Here's Becky. I am Becky Brown, and today we are going to talk about living with a person who deals with anxiety and loving them well. Um, if you have a loved one who struggles with anxiety and you don't, that's not an issue for you, it can be really difficult to know how to connect and how to have a good relationship with them. Um, it can also be frustrating to you and also the person who's struggling with the anxiety because you think of things in a different way than they do. They experience life in a different way than you do. And um, the, the bridge to cross can be really a difficult one if you're not aware or if you're not willing to do what is necessary. It's a common, it's the most common, anxiety is the most common of all mental illnesses, and yet it's the most underreported. At some point in everyone's life, they're gonna deal with some anxiety, um, 
on some level, but only when it gets to an extreme, you know, with um, some folks, it may be that they have a panic attack and then that causes them to seek help because that can be very frightening. And if you're in a relationship with somebody who's had a panic attack, it can be frightening for you as well. Um, it, it's hard to know what to do in times like that. So let's go over a couple of things that might be helpful. Uh, one of the number one things when you're dealing with somebody who has anxiety, don't tell them it's no big deal and it's all gonna be okay. It's the most frustrating thing for the person who's dealing with the anxiety. I remember um, one of my daughters at some point in uh, her life, she was struggling with uh, something that was causing her to feel anxious. And I said, just stop thinking about it. Now here I am, I'm a licensed counselor. <laughs> I'm supposed to know better. And yet I just, you know, cut that feeling off. Not a big deal. And she said, mom, if it were so easy just to not think that way, don't you think I would already do that? And it was so profound to me. I've thought about that many times. So if that's been your go-to, <laughs> stop it. Don't say it's no big deal or quit thinking about it because the person who's struggling with anxiety actually needs to express what is inside of them. And so you might say, would you like to talk about it? Can you tell me more? Just be curious. Don't try to fix it but really give some good space so that you can listen. Now, you know, the hard part about that is then the next thing is you don't wanna enable. Sometimes when somebody is dealing with anxiety and you are not and you're in that relationship, they can become very powerful in how you are going about in life. Um, the anxiety can overtake them and then you try to make life better for them. So you kind of, um, take away anything that might trigger them or you try to over help. And what I think is more helpful instead is to ask them, what do you need? How can I help? And then if you, if you notice that they start to isolate um, in order to kind of not feel that anxiety, like let's say that they um, stop going to church and uh, you just think, okay, well, I can't ask about that. Well, before long, they may become, you know, dealing with agoraphobia because they don't wanna leave their room. And so you wanna be inquisitive about it, not to push a bunch of buttons, but just to say, I noticed that you stopped going to church or stopped going to see your friend. Um, can you tell me what happened or what that's about? And just give a space for them to express that. Now it could be, that you follow up with something like, um, would you like me to go with you? Would that be helpful? And do you see how that's different? If you're enabling, you just assume, well, I'm gonna fix this and I'm gonna take care of it. Or you even go the other way and you don't even say anything. You just pretend like you know, business as usual. It's no big deal that they're not going anywhere anymore. That's not good either. You have to have, find places of connection so that you can have some uh, conversations that may not be easy, but they're gonna be helpful. The other thing is you don't wanna force the issue. Um, if they're truly in a panic or if they're scared about doing something that it, it, it could make it worse if you try to force it. Your presence can be a calming um, uh, me mechanism for them if they're really struggling with something. So instead you want to ask them what are they thinking about? You know, and sometimes in anxiety, you, you, you can't even form a thought, especially if you're in a level of panic. That's when you wanna ask them, okay, let's take a breath. I'll breathe with you. I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. What do you need? And don't pellet them with a bunch of questions because that also creates anxiety, but, but establish your presence with them. And then, you know, it might be after they calm down a little bit that, you don't wanna ignore the obvious. And then you may ask them, hey, I noticed that that was really hard for you. We, it might be helpful to ask someone to help us. And that you ask if you, you know, if they wanna go talk to someone or if they would like the two of you to go talk with someone. The idea is that you want to notice what their struggle is without condemning them for having the struggle. 
and it's a balance. And especially if this has been part of your relationship with this person, you may be exasperated. You may be so frustrated because nothing seems to work. And what I would encourage you to do, if you're at that level where your frustration is kind of matching their level of anxiety, you may need to go talk to somebody first and come up with some strategies of how to help. It can be helpful in just finding ways to connect with your loved one when you're not dealing with an anxiety issue. You know, are you spending time together? Are you doing things that you enjoy together? Um, you know, and this can be not even just for spouses. This is for friends, family members, um, you know, your, your children. A lot of times kids deal with anxiety and it looks like just disobedience when actually the kids are feeling fearful of something or anxious about something. And so we have to work at trying to find that level of calm where we can have that connection. Um, playing together, you know, doing something that doesn't require, you know, some immediate, you know, decision making or some sort of a, uh, problem solving can create some connections in that relationship. In How We Love, Mylon and Kay uh, talk about the soul word list. And I think that can also be helpful when you're dealing with somebody who has anxiety. You can begin to use a language, you know, the soul word list is just a list of feeling words and you maybe create them on your own and begin having this kind of vocabulary in your family so that the, the answer fine to how are you doing doesn't usually fly. That instead you may ask them, uh, you know, what was, the, what was the biggest feeling that you had today? And that they would be able to refer to a list and then eventually you begin to know some of those words and can describe what is going on for you and you can hear from them. It can be, it can be tough um, in a relationship with someone who struggles with anxiety. They're not doing this to you. Um, you may have to do some self-reflection to see if you may be creating some of the anxiety. Now, that sounds like a pretty risky statement, but Truly, if you're uh, a person that may be powerful in your personality, or maybe you have some control issues that are out of control, you could be creating the problem that you're dealing with. Now, that's not a blame. That's just, I want you to reflect. I want you to think about this. The frustration can be strong when you see someone suffering and you think, why are you still in that mode? How can I help you? It can feel, you can feel helpless. So I want you to ask yourself, how am I contributing to this? What can I do to help myself and not feel resentment towards my, my significant person? And it, again, it doesn't have to be a spouse. It can be a mom, a dad, a, a child that you have. It could be a sibling. And just recognize this is something that's really difficult for them. How can I be compassionate? How can I extend some understanding and give them space? Creating an ongoing conversation about this can connect you in a way that can be powerful and healing for the other person. Be willing to go the extra mile, but also stay connected and not resentful because of the struggle that they have. I hope that helps. If you need help, you know where to find us, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Are you going through your struggles alone? Do you want someone to talk to to help you through your pain? Do you feel like a failure when you relapse again, telling yourself, next time will be different? Don't walk this path alone anymore. Join a life recovery group today and be a person that your friends and family can be proud of. God created us to be in community and we believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience. There are life recovery groups all over the country and if there isn't one in your area, we can help you start one. Life recovery brings recovery to you right where you are. You'll take a journey with others to find healing and freedom. Whether you're looking to join a group or start one, New Life Ministries is here for you. 
Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or visit liferecoverytoday.net. Well, as my mom, 95 years old, says, it's always something. And in this changing world that we live in, it can be so overwhelming because it's always something and something and something else. Whether it's family, work, whatever it is, it really is always something. And, you know, we think, oh boy, I wish it was something else. But uh, no, we, we can deal with this. God will help us deal with this, whatever this is. Maybe we couldn't, uh, the other thing. So when everything seems to be shifting, we want to know how can we find a firm foundation for our lives. And that's what Becky is going to talk about right now, that firm foundation in the midst of a shifting world. So right now, here again, Becky Brown on that foundation. Hello. I'm Becky Brown, and I am going to talk to you today about dealing with the changing world that we live in. I mean, doesn't it seem like everything is crazy right now? The truth of the matter is, it's always kind of been crazy. The world has always had so many things going on, and yet in this day and age, we get privy to all the details of everything that we didn't know that we needed to know. And that really has affected each and every one of us. You know, um, fear and anxiety start to build in as we hear stories from around the world or even dealing with the tensions within our own family. You know, the pandemic has really um, stressed a lot of us for lots of different reasons. And it doesn't look like that's all gonna calm down anytime soon. You're also, the expectations. You know, I remember last year um, that there were a lot of marriages or weddings that didn't go as they had planned and mainly because of the pandemic and there were a lot of broken hearts but at the same time they were creative about how they could get together but their expectations weren't matched i know a lot of people are dealing with anger as well as they're stressed about their finances and the challenges that uh, these changes in the world have made and you know that sounds you know very dreary and uh, becky where's the hope in all of that the reality is we do have hope. We, we serve a, a God that loves us and has provided for us in so many ways. And we can be sure that he's got, he's got this under control. He knows what's happening. But we're still kind of wondering, how do we deal with this? What can we do? You know, in John 16, it's all in the red letters. That means that Jesus is talking um, in this passage of scripture. But you may have heard that that verse, John 16, 33, that says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus says this at the end of that chapter. And in, the, in that chapter, he talks about the things that are going to come as he's leaving um, this world as a human. Uh, the disciples, of course, are trying to understand what in the world is he talking about. It doesn't make sense to them. It, it can't be, you know, he's going to be there always. That's, that's what their thought is. And then he reminds them, I'm going to leave you with a gift that's going to help you. And then the end of that chapter where he says, take heart, I have overcome the world. The message to us, even in this day where, you know, a pandemic or inflation or political unrest or oh, there's so many things that I could list. We can have hope. We can be uh, sure that God has a plan and that he's working it out. But you know what? We sometimes need a plan like while we're going through the plan, right? So the first thing would be to ask God, the Father, to help you in this time of need. If you're struggling with anxiety, if you're struggling with fear, you can draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You do that through his word. Get to know the Lord and know how much he loves you. It's not, I'm not just saying just find a verse so that it makes you feel better. I literally want you to build your relationship with God. I had a call last week from one of our donors who was struggling with, how can I know that I have a relationship with God? It was creating fear and anxiety on top of all of the things that are happening in this world. And so we just talked about, it is that day-to-day 
connection through, word, through the Word of God, through prayer, through community of believers, through exploring what does God say about our lives, both personally and how we are to function in this world and how Christ is going to be um, changing our hearts and we become more Christ-like through knowing Him personally. The second thing I would say is to seek help. Uh, we're made for community, and so sometimes our help can come from our friends, our family, people who love us and know us, but also it could be um, part of seeking help professionally. As you know, we know a few counselors across this country, and it could be that you need to make a call and just talk through some of the anxiety and the fear, maybe even the anger that you're experiencing in your life today because of what changes you're experiencing in the world or just how the world just looks a little different. It, it also can help as you relieve some of your burden, you know, you, you say out loud some of the things that you're struggling with, you can begin to get a different perspective. You know, many times we have a big story in our head about how things should be and how they were supposed to be, and it can create um, stress in and of itself. So you sometimes need to just disrupt that story. And you do that through talking either through a counselor to a, a friend or even your pastor. And if you're not in a, a church, the church community can really be a helpful resource as you are going through these days. Um, you know, and if you need to, to find a new church, that can be a process in and of itself. But, you know, just ask, ask some of your friends and your family. Go visit for a couple of weeks and just, just explore how can I find peace in the midst of all of this world? And the third thing I would say is knock. Knock over your resentments. Knock through the barriers that are keeping you stuck. And to whatever is keeping you focused on what is wrong in the world. You know, it's not to have a Pollyanna attitude that, you know, it's all going to be fine. And, you know, um, we're going to just you know, go off rainbows and butterflies. That's not it. There are some really, really difficult things in the world. There may be some difficult things that you are handling in your life today. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't hear a prayer request or talk to someone who is struggling with something that's really hard. But I want to encourage you to press on and press through those things. It may may need a new routine. It could be that... Um, Maybe if depression has started to set in because of this fear and anxiety that you need to seek someone, uh, maybe a medical doctor to uh, add even an antidepressant. It could be that you just need to go for a walk every day. Get outside and get your body moving. It's amazing how uh, getting your endorphins and your serotonin level built up it can make you feel better. It also could be, you know, maybe you journal, spend some time just expressing what is going on in your heart and in your mind. Um, we have a great journal at New Life that has some prompts that can help you with that because sometimes that empty piece of paper can be daunting. Just finding a way to knock through some of those things that just keep spinning around in your mind. And you may need a new habit. So I mentioned before about getting um, time in the Word. Maybe you start each day and if you're not in a habit of being in God's Word every day, you just start with a verse and then you build on that. It could be that you join a Bible study. It could be that um, it may be the physical habit that I just talked about, that you begin to start to work out um, or, or drink more water. It could be simple things like that. As you connect with God and you make these new changes, you will find that the world will seem a little bit less scary it may not end any wars. It may not cure this pandemic. But the peace that passes all understanding is going to be in your heart and in your mind as you press through these difficult days. We can know that the hope of the world was given to us as a child. And he was born and raised so that we may have life to the full. And that's what I want for you today. So if you are challenged with all that's going on in the world, reach out today and begin to find that hope in Christ. And we can help you find a counselor. You can call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and we'll be glad to connect you. Well, 
living one day at a time. That is not easy. You know, I, I think a lot of us get stuck in the past. We're living a past day at a time. And it's a past that we cannot change. We want to change it. We regret what's in there. But thinking about how it could have been different or what we would like to have done, it just doesn't help. That's why we do grieving workshops to help people get out of that. Other people, they're not afraid or they're not focused living in the past they can't change. They're really focused on all the days ahead that they cannot predict what's going to happen or they cannot control. And that's just as overwhelming is to be living out there. It really is something when we can stop all of that and come to grips with today and live one day at a time today, focused on being present with whomever we're with. You know, it's easy to slip back into worry. It's uh, easy to have this what if or if only mentality. And um, it's easy to not just slip into it, but to live that way. And every time you have a setback, you have to go right back, I think, to the teachings of Christ and what he said. Here's what he said. He said, can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's troubles are enough for today. Well, that's Matthew 6, 27 uh, and 34. So, if you want to live a day at a time, it's a good thing. Because today, I can choose to find joy. And today, I can choose to find strength. Today, I can be sane. And I can start to accept the reality that's here today versus focusing on a reality that will never be again, a reality that may never come. We don't need to worry. What we need to do is focus on today. Do that. Hey, thank you for watching Life Recovery Today. If you need any kind of help or need a resource, one of the workbooks or a Life Recovery Bible, you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or you could go uh, to newlife.com. But I'm so grateful to connect with you here and um, hope that you'll come right back here same time next week. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. We hope this program has helped you integrate God's truth and wisdom into your recovery journey. This program is brought to you by New Life Ministries, and it's your support that keeps this program on the air. When you contact us for any reason, be sure to let us know that you watch on NRB. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to liferecoverytoday.net. Please join us again next week for more Life Recovery Today.